Hello and welcome to the Hot Rod Bible Study, where tonight we're going to be finishing up our look into Acts chapter 7, uh, where our hero Stephen has been uh, reminding the religious leaders of their history and kind of schooling them all this stuff. And they're not really wild about it. And tonight we'll see what all ends up with that. Uh, and so, easy enough, let's just go into prayer. Heavenly Father, again, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word and our ability to study it. Lord, I pray again that you open our hearts and minds to your word and that uh, you send your Holy Spirit upon us here so as uh, we can be used as your instrument. So, Lord, that's what I ask, and I pray that you keep me from doing something silly, and your blessing on this, I pray your blessing on this study. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, uh, this again is a continuation of our hero Stephen uh, and him addressing the, the Sanhedrin. I like what my friend Greg Opine called him, call him the religious mafia because they're out trying to make hits on those who they don't that don't agree with what they have to say so let's just dive right in where it says this is that Moses who said to, to the children of Israel the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren him you shall hear this is he who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai and with our fathers, the one who received the living oracles to give to us, whom our fathers would not obey, but rejected. And in their hearts, they turned back to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make us gods to go before us. As, as for this Moses who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days, offered sacrifices to the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands. Then God turned and gave them up to worship the hosts of heavens, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you offer me slaughtered animals and sacrifices during the 40 years in the wilderness, O house of Israel. You also took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god Remphan, images which you made to worship, and I will carry you beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of wilderness, of witness in the wilderness, as he appointed according to Moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen, which our fathers, having received it in turn, also brought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before God and asked to find a dwelling for the God of Jacob. But Solomon built him a home. A house, pardon me. However, the, high, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all these things? You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your father did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the direction of angels and have not kept it. <clears throat> when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed their teeth, they gnashed at him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. 
Then they cried out in a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord, and they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down, cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So what did Stephen get for his uh, continued schooling to the religious mafia? Well, he got stoned. Uh, the first recorded Christian martyr. Okay, now let's see what we can, let's dive a little deeper into this. Verse 37, this is that Moses who said to the children of Israel, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear. Let's look at John chapter 1, verse 45, where it says, Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. So here they are, okay, in the same um, contemporary time frame where here we have Stephen telling these guys, hey, this is the guy that Moses spoke of. And Nathaniel was speaking about this is the guy that Moses told us about now. Verse 38 goes on to say, This is he, Moses, who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him on Mount Sinai. Remember, Moses is the one that led the children of Israel out of captivity in Egypt. Now, it says, The angel spoke to him on Mount Sinai, and with our fathers, the one who received the living oracles, to give us, and here's key, verse 39, whom our fathers would not obey, but they rejected. You know, it, it, Stephen continues to remind these guys that Moses, whom they held, the, the Sanhedrin and all the religious leaders held in such high regard that their fathers, the patriarchs, these guys, what do they do? They rejected Moses just as the religious leaders, the Sanhedrin, rejected Jesus. So Stephen's doing a real good job of showing this parallel of what's going on at the same time. Now, it said here that the fathers would not obey, but rejected, and in their hearts they turned back to Jesus. Uh, again, um, looking Oh, longing for the good old days uh, where, you know, they had, oh, we had plenty to eat. And you took us out here. We didn't have anything to eat. Um, Sarah Groves was a contemporary Christian artist that I started listening to. All of a sudden, it's been over 20 years ago. Had this song that was um, painting pictures of Egypt and leaving out what it lacks. It says the future looks so hard and I want to go back. And that's what was going on with the children of Israel when they were rebelling. They said, oh man, we had it so much better in Egypt. Forgetting that they were enslaved. <laughs> Forgetting that Pharaoh was killing babies. Forgetting all these things. Oh, we had it so much better. Right? Okay. Now, and they were saying to Aaron, which is Moses' brother, Make us gods. Notice it's a, if you're looking in, in your Bible, you'll notice that it is a small G God, not a large G God, small G and gods, plural, to go before us. Because as for this Moses, who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what has become of him. Now, why were they saying that? Well, Moses was gone for 40 days and 40 nights, okay, which is a Pretty common thing in Old Testament scripture. We talk about the flood. Remember we talk about, or the deluge lasted 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus was tempted in the desert, 40 days, 40 nights. And now we're talking about 
back to Moses was gone for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, so here they are thinking, Moses is gone. We got to do something different. And what happens? They made a calf in those days, offered sacrifices to the idol, and rejoiced, and get this, the work to their own hands. And that's the thing about idols. Uh, oh, Willie, that, that doesn't happen today. Well, I don't know. Uh, some guys kind of idolize these things. You know, that's, that's what becomes... It's funny because they'll reject so many things with Christianity and place all their importance on things that are material. Um, I feel blessed that I have these things. Uh, but I'll tell you what, if it came between me having these and me having Christ in my life, guess what to go? <laughs> it's pretty simple. But these are things that the... They were doing back here. And as a matter of fact, let's look at Exodus chapter 32, where it talks about this. We're going to look at verses 1 through 4, where it said, Now the people saw that Moses delayed in coming down from the mountain. The people gathered and together to Aaron. Okay, it's Moses' brother, right? And said to him, come, make us the gods that we shall, that shall go before us. And here it is, as for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we don't know what's become of him. And Aaron said to them, break off the golden earrings that are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them to Aaron. And he received the gold from their hand. He fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Then they said, this is your God, again, small g, O Israel, that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Stephen is really pointing out to them how fickle they are. Uh, you know, you, you think about it, all the, and we'll get into this a little bit later in the study tonight, all the minor prophets, what were they doing? They were pointing out how fickle the children of Israel were. Uh, the one that really comes to mind right now is Hosea. And if you'll remember our study in Hosea, God had Hosea marry a hooker. Okay, that was a deal. And really to prove, to, really to show that they were prostituting themselves to foreign gods. And to show them through Hosea how their prostituting themselves or going after uh, foreign gods hurt God as Gomer, the prostitute that Hosea married, was hurting Hosea. You know, how would you like to be called into that ministry? Oh, you know, uh, hey, Willie, I think, uh, I think you really ought to go out and marry a hooker, and, and she's going to go out and, and have all these other guys while she's married to you. <laughs> this is something I'm glad God has not called me to. Okay, so talking about that. Now, verse 30, 40, pardon me, 42 talks about, then God turned them, turned and gave them up to worship the hosts of heaven. Again, he gave them over to their own desires. God does this throughout scripture. How, especially in the Old Testament, giving the people of children of Israel over to their own desires. It's funny because Boy, when things are going swimmingly, man, they're doing really great. And then they think so highly of themselves. <laughs> oh, we don't need God. And then God says, okay, because you don't need me. Have at it, kids. You know, and look what happens. They get hauled off into exile and many things like that. Okay, so he gave them over their own desires. And as it is written in the book of the prophets, and here he is, uh, Stephen's quoting from Amos chapter 25. Did you offer me slaughtered animals and sacrifices during your 40 years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? This is God speaking. Then he goes on to say, You also took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Remphan. Now, these are two pagan gods. Remphan is a star god of Mesopotamia. Moloch was kind of an Assyrian, well, it was an Assyrian god, and Moloch was the one that they 
sacrifice children to. And it's funny because just before uh, the study night, we were talking about this. This is going on today. You know, the, all, the, all the abortions. You know, again, I thought differently about this 30 years ago than I do today. But 40 years, pardon me, 40 years ago. But this is the deal. Uh, it is child sacrifice. Well, we don't have Moloch, Willie. Really. Yeah, but what we have is I want to have sex with anybody who I want to at any time I want to without any sort of responsibility. You know, and so, okay, we'll sacrifice these babies so I can do anything with my body that I want to. Not thinking about the body of the baby that truly is being sacrificed, just like they did back then to Moloch. Okay, it says here, images which you made to worship. Again, referring to the golden calf, all these things. It said, and I, speaking of God, I will carry you away beyond Babylon. You know, the children of Israel were exiled to Babylon back in 597 BC. So about 600 years prior to this, about Stephen talking about this. Now, verse 44 says, our fathers had the tabernacle of witnesses in the wilderness as he, God, appointed, instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that Moses had seen, that he, Moses, had seen, which our fathers, having received in turn, also brought with Joshua into the land possessed by the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before God and was and asked to find a dwelling for the God of Jacob. Now here's the next thing. Verse 47 says, But Solomon built him a house. Why was that? Well, let's look at First Chronicles chapter 22. First Chronicles chapter 22, verses 8 and 9 where it says, but the word of the Lord came to me, and, and this, is, this is David, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, you have shed much blood and have made great wars. You shall not build a house for my name, because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to you, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies all around. His name shall be Solomon, for I will give peace and quietness to Israel in his days. Interestingly enough, thinking about this while I'm reading it, in his days. Okay, now we get Solomon's sons, whose name escaped me all of a sudden. But right after Solomon died, they started chasing after doing pagan stuff. <laughs> and that's when the kingdom split north and south. And uh, this made a big mess of it. Uh, so God had promised Solomon peace throughout his days. Now, we, we read about Solomon a bit when we were studying Ecclesiastes. You know, and Solomon was a really bright guy that did a bunch of dumb stuff. You know, he had all this wisdom, but he didn't use it very well. He did silly things like, like rejecting the rules, if you will, for the kings of Israel that God had laid out. Things like, you know, not buying horses and increasing your armies with these things. And all, uh, actually, he, Solomon did something really dumb by marrying women of foreign lands, you know, crazy stuff. So there it is. And, and again, Stephen is telling, reminding these religious guys about this. Now, verse 48 says, However, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says. Okay, again, had this beautiful temple. Solomon's temple was just absolutely beautiful. It's kind of interesting because when the children of Israel return from exile, they were rebuilding the temple, and the people that saw the old one says, oh, 
this isn't as good as the old one. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, this isn't like our old church. The carpet's not red. You know, this, this kind of stuff is silly stuff. Okay, now, now for that, I digress. Now back to it, it says, however, the Most High does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says. And this is coming from Isaiah chapter 66, where the prophet says, heaven is my throne. The earth is my footstool. What will you build for me? What house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Has not my hand made all these things? Okay, so God is reminding him, oh yeah, you know that neat cedar paneling? Well, who made the cedar trees? You know, all that neat gold and silver and all that stuff that was done? Gee, who produced the gold and silver? You know, God is saying, all these things are done by me. Okay, now, here we have Stephen really pouring it on, man. He says, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Stiff-necked, what's that mean? Stubborn. Now, I don't know that if you know anybody who's stubborn or not, I know I'm not stubborn. I've never been stubborn in my life. And for those of you who know me well enough, they're just rolling their eyes saying, oh, come on. Uh, but that's deal stubborn and hard pressed to change your mind. And talking about uncircumcised and heart and ears, they were placing, you know, these guys, these religious leaders placed more importance on the physical circumcision. Right? Oh, unless you're circumcised, you're not, you know, you're not part of the house of Israel. You can't do this. More on physical circumcision than on having open hearts and ears. Okay. So it's circumcised, opened up. Okay. Now, it says, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did. Which of the prophets did your fathers not? persecute. And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, namely Jesus. Uh, talking about killing all the prophets. Right now I'm in a, involved in a men's Bible study where we've been studying all the minor prophets. And yeah, yep, that's what happened to them. We're currently in the book of Zechariah, and I want to read you something from Matthew 23. If I can get, oh, there it is. Matthew 23. We're going to be looking in verses 31 to 36, where it says, ah, Therefore, you are witnesses against yourselves. And this is Jesus speaking. Therefore, you are witnesses against yourselves that you are the sons of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your father's guilt. Serpents, brood of vipers, how can you escape the condemnation of hell? Therefore, indeed, I send you prophets, wise men, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city, that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, the blood of the righteous, able to the blood of, here we got it, Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Assuredly, I say to you, all these things will come about upon in this generation. So here's Jesus referring to Zechariah, which again, we have uh, Stephen talking about how you persecuted these prophets, even killing them. Okay, there's all our... Uh, uh, Oh, how do I want to put it? It's uh, more bona fides. It's more uh, Stephen is really quoting what's been going on here. Okay. Says, uh, the just one, Jesus, whom you now have become betrayers and murderers. So he's calling them betrayers and murderers who have received the law by the direction of the angels and have not kept it. Okay. Hardened hearts. It just seems, seems so strange that you have religious leaders, right, that are supposed to be the ones who uh, are following God, who have hardened hearts and will not follow 
what God has a say. And it happens today in churches all over the United States that they will not follow what Jesus had to say. And they, they preach a uh, gospel of, man, you know, you just do this and you'll be, you'll be blessed, you know. Uh, you'll have the car you want to drive or whatever the drive that is, you know, and they don't follow the gospel. And it happens today just as it was happening back then when Stephen's talking to these guys. Now, here we get it. Verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and gnashed at him with their teeth. Uh, E.M. Zur put it this way. They were grinding their teeth in an insane fit of anger. So our hero, Stephen, really pissed them off. They didn't want to hear this, right? And so what do they do? They said, well, let's, they'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Verse 55 says, Stephen, but he, being full of the Holy Spirit. Well, how did this start off? Stephen was full of the Holy Spirit. Throughout this entire time, Stephen is full of the Holy Spirit. Okay, and he is the Holy Spirit is using him to speak this truth to these religious leaders, right? Again, the religious mafia, the ones who took out Jesus, the one who had taken out anybody who was against them. Okay, and he full of the Holy Spirit. He had to be. Because it doesn't stay here, say here that Stephen was part of the Pharisees or the Sadducees or anything to do in that arena. But here he is. He's reminding these Pharisees and Sadducees of these things. Now, so he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man is standing at the right hand of God. And here if uh, Bruce, F.F. F. Bruce says, Stephen had been confessing Christ before men, and now he sees Christ confessing his servant before God. Isn't that great? And can you imagine? That must have, must have, must have lit their hair on fire. Well, let's see what it has to say. <laughs> then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. And I, I can just see this, a loud voice and stop. And they're going, la, 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 la. You know, I don't want to hear this whole thing, <laughs> you know. And so here they are, but they're pissed. And they're running after him. They cast him out of the city and stoned him. It says here that they laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Laying their clothes. Well, it's kind of like taking off your coat before you get ready to be Getting down to business. You know, you think about uh, seeing old movies or something like that, where there's these guys that are going to go to a boxing match, and of course they first lay down their coat and do all this stuff. Same kind of thing is what this is going on here. And it talked about this young man named Saul. Well, we'll be hearing a lot more about this young man named Saul in further chapters throughout the book of Acts. Uh, you'll probably know that he ends up having quite the experience on the road to Damascus. I'll leave it there. So, verse 59 said, And they stoned Stephen as he was calling on God, saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Now, G. Campbell Morgan talks about this. It talks about the fires in the olden days never made martyrs. I know that, what are they talking about? It talks about the fires of the olden days. Well, when they burned people at the stake. Uh, an example is Johann Hus, who was a reformer, who was saying, hey, you know, you guys, you guys in the church, you're goofed up, and you really need to cut it out. And they burned them at the stake. And this is the 15th century. And it's interesting that he said, while he was being made barbecue, that you can burn me, but there's going to be another guy coming around in about 100 years that you're not going to do this to. That being Martin Luther in that reformer deal. Okay, now it says, in the olden days, never made martyrs. They revealed them. I think that's pretty heavy to say. They revealed them. No hurricane of persecution ever creates martyrs 
It reveals them. Stephen was a martyr before they stoned him. He was the first martyr to seal his testimony with his blood. Wow. And here's a guy full of the Holy Spirit, and these religious leaders reject him and stone him. Then, verse 60, Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not charge him with them with this sin. Does that sound familiar? And I'm just going to, and you know it, you know it as well as I do. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. What did Jesus say? Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they do. Stephen's saying the same thing. If that isn't grace, I don't know what is. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. There, it's interesting how the scripture re, says that he fell asleep uh, as not being dying in anguish, which you would probably think somebody who was being stoned would die in anguish. Of course, Jesus gave up his spirit on the cross as well. Okay. That's it for this evening. Looking for questions, comments, or smart aleck remarks. Jimmy uh, took a nap this afternoon, so I can't give him a hard time about falling asleep. <laughs> so it's been great. I, I honestly hope that everybody is getting as much out of this as I am. Uh, it really shows how life in the early church Began and it will continue to show throughout the book of Acts. We'll see all this stuff that went on. Um, we have nothing here in the United States to complain about the persecution that we receive. What do we get persecuted? What, what happens? Well, the only persecution I think that I've ever kind of received is people possibly ostracizing me. Okay, so what? You know, if it, if you're if you're sharing the gospel. Uh, people don't want to hear it. They're going to go, la, 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 just like these guys did. Uh, but, uh, man, we got to just be faithful as Stephen was in this. So with that, uh, again, if you have any questions, comments, or smart aleck remarks, feel free to do them. If you need prayer for anything, uh, again, I'm around. And with that, uh, it's interesting we mentioned Aaron in this, and this is the Arianic blessing where he says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>